God of all flesh, the only one, Lord, to whom everyone, every human being will ultimately gather. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of another time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the good and beautiful things you have prepared for us. And Lord, for the way you are going to bless us today, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for how you have dealt with us, Lord, from the beginning of this year, even till now. Today is the last Sunday in the month of September. I want you to raise your voice, lift it up, eyes to God, and say, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We bless your name because, Lord, you are the doer of all good things. Thank you, Lord, because we have never been disappointed. Whenever we call on you, you have always answered us. Father, we say thank you. Lord, be honored and glorified in the name of Jesus. I want you to commit today into the hands of the Lord. I want you to ask God, saying, Father, today we want to experience you like never before. Lord, we want to experience you, Lord, like never before. Lord, this morning we ask, we purge ourselves, oh Lord, because you, you want to experience God. God is not going to come to a place where there is guilt. So we are going to ask God, Father, cleanse us, Lord, from every form of filth, from every form of uncleanness, from every form of unrighteousness. Lord, this morning your word says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive us and also cleanse us from every form of unrighteousness. Therefore, this morning, Lord, we confess our faults. We confess our errors. Lord, even before you, the sins that easily beset us, the ones that are eating, the things we did without even knowing. Lord, this morning we confess. We ask, Lord, that we forgive us. And Lord, that we have mercy. Lord, we cleanse us by the, with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, from every form of unrighteousness. Lord God, you will make us worthy to offer to you worship that will be acceptable in the name of Jesus. As we have forged ourselves, I want us to go ahead and ask God, Father, we invite you afresh, Lord, even into this gathering. We ask, oh Lord God, that you honor our gathering with your presence. Lord, that we will experience you, Lord, in a new and unique way today. Lord, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that surely there is an end and the expectation of the righteous man shall not be cut short. Therefore, I want you to call on God and say, Lord, whatsoever it is that our expectations are, from the least, the smallest to the biggest, Lord, no one will go back home with their expectations of men in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are just coming just to see, just to watch, those that are logging in just to watch, just passing by the page on YouTube, Lord, just to see what they are doing, we ask, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit will arrest them. The power of the Holy Spirit will get their attention in the name of Jesus. I want us to saturate this environment with the blood of Jesus and ask the Father, every form of distraction, we come against this. The scripture says, for our, our, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but is mighty through God to pull down strongholds and to cast down every imagination, every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Therefore, Father, we bring into captivity every thought, every thought, Lord, to the obedience of Christ. While the service is going on, Lord, we bring into captivity every thought, oh Lord, even to the obedience of Christ, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that as your people gather, Lord, our focus will be on you. You will be the center of our attention. You will be the center of our attraction. Lord, you will be our only affection, Lord, not only during the service, but Lord, even afterwards, in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for everyone that will minister in one capacity or the other. We are going to ask God, Father, we want your hand to rest upon them heavily in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your hand rest upon everyone in the Sunday school, the Sunday school teacher, the people that will lead the praise and worship, the person that will minister the word, everyone that has one duty or the other, one role or the other to play in this service. Father, we ask 
that your hand, Lord, will rest upon them. Lord, your hand will rest upon them, O oh Lord, heavily in the name of Jesus. They are your instruments prepared, O oh Lord, even to minister life unto your people. We ask this morning that, Father, you will minister life unto everyone. Lord, unto everyone that will gather in this place in the name of Jesus. We pray for our online audience, Lord. We ask that, Father, because you are not limited by space, you are not limited, Lord, because of location. Lord, that the same power that will be present physically in this auditorium will reach everyone that will be online, that will join online in the name of Jesus. Those that will watch later, Lord, that same power will be present to heal, to deliver. Jesus said, the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, but I have come to give you life and to give you life abundantly. Therefore, this morning, we are asking the Father, we want that abundant life to be, uh, to be available. And Lord God, you will give us the spirit of faith to reach out, Lord, so that we can benefit, we can access, Lord, this abundant life that is in Christ Jesus alone, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We pray, Lord, for everyone that is yet on their way. Lord, we ask that we hasten their, their steps, that we make a way, Lord, for those who do not even know how they are going to get here, but they have a desire to come. Lord, make way for them in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, for those who are struggling one way or the other, that, Lord, we also make a way for them in the name of Jesus. You are a worker. I want you to tell God, Father, from this service, this is my expectation this morning. Go ahead and just express your heart to God. Tell him whatever your expectation is. Tell him whatever your expectation is. I can assure you that God is going to meet it beyond your imagination in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We give you the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, everlasting Father, because you are worthy, Lord, to receive the praise and the glory. I want us to lift up our voices once again and just give God praise. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He alone should be honored. He is big and mighty. That's why we can gather before him. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We give you the glory and the praise. Worship him in the language of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, everlasting Father. We say, Lord, be honored. Father, be exalted. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I want you to walk up to two, three people. Just welcome them to church. Tell them you are welcome. God bless you. God bless you mightily. You are welcome to a day, your day of visitation. Hallelujah. Welcome to your day of visitation. God is going to visit us. God is going to visit us in very unique way. God is going to visit you in a way that you will never forget in the precious name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am so glad. I am always glad whenever it is time to come into God's house. Hallelujah. Because in his presence, scripture says, there is fullness of joy and there, is, there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. So when I come, I know that I go with his presence with me everywhere. I abide in his presence as we always confess. So the presence of God is not limited to this auditorium. You know, um, God's presence goes with me. In fact, I, it's not God's presence going with me. I am the one dwelling in his presence and carrying it with me everywhere I go. So when I now come into his house, I get a double portion. Praise the Lord. I get a double portion. Why? Because I know that in his presence, if the joy, something happened during the week, and the joy was tampered with, 
I can come back and I will get the refill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I just want to remind us um, one or two things, a quick reminder from some of the things that we have learned. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my notes. Um, yes. To get to my notes, the notes I would love to share with us. I remember at the beginning of this year, we were taught certain things. Okay. So, we will just do a quick one. So, there is nothing about you that God is not interested in. Praise the Lord. Let's read from 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. So, you need to help me. This phone has to be sent. <laughs> so, I'm hoping it doesn't go off. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. Who is helping? Hallelujah. Says that. But the anointing that we have received of him abides in us. Okay, let me read it. I'm trying to personalize it. It says, but the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you all of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even and even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit, God gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us everything. Why? Because God is interested in everything about us. Praise the Lord. So, we are workers. God has called us to serve him for a purpose. And he didn't just call us to serve and to serve anyhow. There is a way, there is a due process to serving God. So that we don't come, waste our time, our resources, our energy and effort. So, he's saying here that we have received the anointing. I want to believe that we have all received that anointing, which is the Holy Spirit in us. He says that anointing that we have received of him abides in us. So we don't need somebody to now start teaching us the nitty gritty of how to serve God as workers. So we should learn to depend on God for everything at any time and in all things. He will never leave you stranded at any point in time. This anointing is given so that we can be progressive. That's one of the reasons why he gave us the Holy Spirit. So that we can be progressive. So that we can move from one level of glory to the other. You know, unfortunately, the word glory has kind of been misinterpreted these days. When you tell somebody to define glory, they think that glory has to do with beautiful cars and houses and wealth and all that. That is not what glory is about. Glory is the whole, as you know, is the whole essence of God. His beauty, his holiness, everything about him. So God wants you to progress in his beauty. So he gave you the Holy Spirit. So that he can teach you every step of the way. You are to move from one level to another. You are not to be static. So if your life is beautiful as it is, God wants it to be even more beautiful. So he moves. And when he's talking about beauty, you know definitely that God does not define beauty the way we define it. So say, oh, I love your hairstyle. It's beautiful. God is not. God likes it when you appear physically attractive and beautiful. But beyond that, you know, God is not looking at the physical attraction. He's not looking at maybe the kind of house you live in. You say, oh, I see glory. No. Which glory? You know, people say these things loosely. Loosely, I see glory. Which glory are you seeing? The glory that God is talking about, I'm sure it's not the visible one. Praise the Lord. I know that the, the invisible, of course, the, what we see should be an expression of what is not seen. Hallelujah. But then, beyond this, so 
glory is not God's beauty in your life as a worker is not limited to, you know, your, how you comport yourself. That's what I'm saying. It's the totality of your life. So if how you comport yourself is limited to your weave, your SI, your jewelry, for inside of you something is not working, then that life is not yet beautiful in its completeness. And God is saying to us this morning that he has given us his Holy Spirit to teach us. He is to teach you how to go about life so that you move from that ugly face to that one that is beautiful, that is attractive. If your life should attract people to the gospel of Christ, to the very presence of God that will carry around you. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I just want to charge us. Don't give up if you think something is not working. God is interested in our total well-being. Praise the Lord. God is what? Interested in our total well-being. And I want you to just do one thing. Place a demand on that anointing that you have received. Praise the Lord. Place some of us, I think maybe because the thing doesn't move us to do and we fall down, we stand up. You know, it's not driving us like we are drunk. Maybe if it's, uh, if, it, if it moved us the way it moved the apostles on the day of Pentecost. You know how it moved them? That they became so bold. Peter delivered a message. In fact, before Peter even delivered the message, they started speaking in different languages. To the extent that people started thinking maybe they were drunk. People could see how they were really moved. Maybe because we don't feel that grit something. So we don't even, we are not even conscious that we have received that anointing. So we don't place a demand on it. I want to charge us this morning to learn to always place a demand on that anointing that you have received. If you are born again, you have received that anointing. The Bible says that anointing should teach you. Please don't take this Bible verse away because I want to refer to it again. It says that anointing should what? Teach you. So if you are in a difficult situation, it is not working as it should, you think this life is not, you know, um, reflecting God's glory as you think it should, as you have read in his word. Place a demand on that anointing because God says that anointing has a purpose. That purpose, the purpose of that anointing is that you don't need any man to come and teach you because your life is peculiar to you. He says that same anointing should teach you all things. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I want you to place a demand on that anointing. I don't know what that thing is that you are going through. I don't know what that phase of your life you are going through. But I have good news for you this morning that God is interested in everything. Everything about you. As far as God is concerned, as far as you are concerned with God, there is nothing like um, this part is not a priority. Every aspect of our lives are priority to God. Praise the Lord. So right now I want you to bow down your head. Place a demand on that anointing you have received. To teach you. What is it that you need the Holy Spirit to teach you as a worker? Is it in your family life? Is it in your business? Is it in your academics? In anything, wherever it's, whatever area, I tell you something, God is interested in everything and anything that has to do about with you. Except you are not his child. If you are born again, he says, you have received this anointing of him. So this morning, I want you to place a demand on that anointing. Ask that he will teach you. That he will show you the way out. That he will help you to navigate the issues of your life. Because you are a worker, you have placed something on the altar of God. That is also an additional reason why you can place a demand on this anointing. Ask him, say, Holy Spirit, I want you to teach me. I want you to lead me, show me the way out of whatever situation I am in. Place a demand. And I, I don't want you to stop it here in this worker's anointing. When you get to your house, when we get home, let's continue. Put, you know, separate yourself into a place. 
prayed some time and placed a demand on this anointing to do the work for which you have been given this anointing. Saying, Lord, I want you to show me the way out. I want you to show me the way out of this ugliness in my life. I want you to show me the way out to the next level, the way up, because my life is supposed to be a progressive life. The Bible says that the path of the righteous man is as the shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So if you are not making progress generally, I want you to tell God, Father, I know you have been given to me, Holy Spirit, to teach me all things. Therefore, I'm placing this demand on you that you will teach me and show me the way out. And I tell you something, God is not going to disappoint you because as you are, while you are calling, he's already answering you and he's going to show you the way out. He's going to teach you all things. Whatever demand you place on the Holy Spirit this morning is going to be answered speedily in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I want you to commit the rest of the service into the hands of God as that the Holy Spirit himself is going to take over. Nobody coming to minister will minister according to the oracles of the flesh, but they are going to speak according to the oracles of God. They are going to speak the mind of God to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you prepare the hearts of your people, that Lord, as your word comes forth, Lord, it will penetrate, Lord, it will go right into our soul, Lord, and bring about the change that we need in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Father, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's welcome.